I'm gonna take you to a Sunday school lesson, you please hear me. The curses and blessings of Hosea were connected to this covenant because Hosea's job was to tell the people that there was danger and God was gonna make sure that Israel kept his covenant. Okay, I believe it's a good place to interject a preacher's point. Some things Christians suffer because it's in our job description. Other things we suffer for the cause of Christ. But there is another form of suffering that visits the saints, and it's because we step down out of covenant. Okay, okay, okay. It's very, it's very clear to me that it's kind of hard for us to uh, swallow that because it's easy to suffer for Christ's sake. And it's easy to suffer when the enemy comes in. But what do you do when God sends someone to tell you it was us that stepped out of covenant? Yeah, it kind of hurts. But God doesn't break his covenant. Listen, this is made very clear to us when God instructs Hosea in the second verse of the passage. He tells him to marry a harlot. For those of you who don't know, uh, a harlot is a streetwalker, a lady of the night, a prostitute. And he tells her, marry this harlot. A harlot uh, gave herself away for, for uh, financial or substantial goods. And God gives this word to Hosea, and it may be rather taboo to you, but he instructs Hosea to marry her so that it will serve as a parable to the people of God of what they are doing to God. Okay, so can I break that down for you? He tells Hosea, listen, marry this streetwalker because I'm married to you and you all over the place. Okay, let's put it in the 21st century. If your church is Restoration Christian Fellowship, you don't need to be nowhere else on a Sunday morning. If this man of God and this woman of God is your pastor, why are you caught up every other place when every other place is having a service and I can't get you at prayer meeting? Go ahead, go ahead. And so now what you do is you come back bringing the spirits of that off church and now we got to deliver the spirits out. Might I announce to you that you have not graduated from the school of prophets until God uses your life as a presentation to the people of the destruction that is soon to come. Listen, listen, uh, what makes me a prophet is not that I can speak a word to you that I never heard. All right, come on. Soothsayers and psychics and Cleo can do that. Listen, what makes me a prophet is not that I can speak something in your life and it happened the next day. Because the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Meaning, uh, I've seen men prophesy and then go sleep around and then still have the same gift. You in the house, right? That's right. That's right. Listen. That's all right. But you, you, you really graduate from the school of prophets when God uses your life and all stuff go away and it's not as a result of sin, but God is just using you to show the world what is to come. I believe God sent me to Restoration Christian Fellowship to announce to you it is not that we stepped out of covenant, but God is using us to show these other churches that if you don't get it right, destruction is soon to come. I believe that. 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 And so when we understand covenant, we ultimately become the contact for others to see what is to come. Meaning your life ought to be the prophecy. Yes. Your life. Your life. Your life. And can I tell you something? And this ain't really in my notes. But I'm so sick of people who bring their situations on their face to church. I'm getting sick of that because I know my ministry is deliverance, but I'm not going to deal with no crooked, raggedy oh, spirit, God. and I'm trying to get praise through. All right. Come on. My God. And so now my assignment is not just to preach to the open ears of the church, but now i got to unstop your deaf ears <laughs> because you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be last night. Right. Am I real enough for the backseat right. saints?
listen, the next thing our generation, the next thing our generation, I need about 10 more minutes, Pastor. The next thing our generation needs to serve notice to God that we are at the place of praise is we need something called a yes, Lord mentality. Amen. A yes, Lord mentality. Amen. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's some people in here with Kojic roots. All right. Yes. And, and in the Kojic church, uh, a man by the name of Bishop Charles Harrison yes, Mason, yes, sir. Yes, uh, through sir. inspiration of the Holy Ghost, yes, just got this song and just began singing, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Now, let me show you the issue with that. It is easy to sing, Yes, Lord, when everything is going right. Yes. But nothing was going right for Bishop Mason when the Holy Spirit gave it to him. And so the Lord is saying, I need the church to have a yes, Lord mentality in spite of your mad mentality, in spite of your sad mentality, and in spite of your bad mentality. I just wish somebody look at their neighbor and say, yes, Lord. All right, listen, when you say yes, Lord, it shifts atmosphere. Say yes, Lord, you go from being pitiful to a praise. When you say yes, Lord, your situations that were over your head become under your feet. It is something about yes, Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Sit down. Y'all scaring me. Y'all scaring me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, you just missed a place to praise them. Yes, Lord. Oh, we in the hotel, but yes, Lord. Not my will, but thine will be done. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way, Lord. I'm going to say yes, Lord, until I get that five acres God promised. at my church and I do honor my bishop Bishop Freddie B. Marshall because we were taught to read the word line by line and precept by precept to oh, give yes. nothing to the word and to take nothing away Amen. and so uh, verse 3 and verse 4 says so he went and took Gomer the daughter of Diblum which conceived and bare him a son and the Lord said unto him call his name Jezreel for yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Jesus, Jesus. Now the text says in verse 3 that Jezreel was conceived. Walk with me. Mm -hmm. But the text in verse 4 says I will avenge the blood of Jezreel. Well, Meaning that between verse 3 and verse 4 Jezreel died. Yes. And so uh, God you're telling me to marry this harlot. And, I bear, and, and now she has conceived. And God, you killed my son. I just called uh, or just came by here to ask you a question. And this isn't in my notes, but I just came to ask you a question. What do you do when the manifestation God promised you dies? Well, oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Yes. What do you do yes, when Lord. that which God yes. promised you yes, Lord. Yes, seems Lord. like it's going out the window? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh, what do you do? When it was so close to your hands uh -huh. and you wake up in the morning and it's lifeless. Yes, Lord. Oh God, what do you do? Yes. You maintain your yes Lord yes. mentality. Yes. Yes. You've got to maintain your yes Lord mentality. You Listen, I know I'm not the first person that's come to this church and said Bill. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. But I, I didn't just come to tell you to build. I came to revive the baby that died. Oh. All right. You see, a lot of people, uh, we preach uh, respiration, uh -huh. but not resuscitation. Let's break that down. Respiration yes. is when your chest is constrained. Uh -huh. And I don't know about y'all, but sometimes you get in the bed and you wake up in the morning, you just have chest pains and you say, I can't get up 